In chapter 23, Diseases of the Urogenital System, we will see perhaps, um, in my opinion, some of the most disturbing images as we continue our look at different diseases separated by systems of the body. As usual, let's start out this chapter by a very brief review of the anatomy. So shown here in this picture to the left, we see an overall view of all of the organs within the urogenital system. So we're gonna be discussing diseases that affect the kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra. This is gonna be the place where we see the very common urinary tract infections, the most common bacterial infection in the world. And it's really because it's just so exposed to the outside. Shown here, you see a little bit more detail of the rest of the reproductive system, which is a lot more complicated. And then female and male are gonna be very different. So with females, we'll see infections of the vagina, the uterus, the cervix. With males, we'll see infections um, sometimes within this epididymis, which is a um, portion of the canal system that carries sperm from the testes. And then we'll see infections within the penis because of the location of the urethra. So we have a lot of overlap between the urinary system and the reproductive system in males. So just make sure you're familiar with some of this terminology. A few more terms you need to be familiar with would be terms like cystitis, inflammation of the bladder, urethritis, which would be inflammation of the urethra. That's where we're gonna um, uh, see this burning during and painful urination. Vaginitis, which is infection of the vagina, can be caused by vaginosis, which is a bacterial infection, or the, quote, yeast infection, which is the fungal infection of the vagina. Some of you may have heard of PID, which is pelvic inflammatory disease. This occurs with an infection of one or a combination of the uterus, cervix, fallopian tube, and or ovaries. So we can see pelvic inflammatory disease as a side infection or side effect of several of these infections that I'll go over. Most of the infections that we will go over in this chapter are sexually transmitted diseases, but they're not all, so I'll make sure I point that out. But just be aware the pictures in this chapter are pretty disturbing, so the pictures are only there for you to look at if you would like. So we're going to start out with gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is still a very common infection in the United States. In fact, if you take a look at this graphic here, I am teaching right now from Mississippi. And you can see Mississippi and Louisiana have very high cases of gonorrhea. The Southeast itself also just has large numbers of gonorrhea. It's a very common infection. So you may think to yourself, why is this infection so common? Gonorrhea is not typically deadly. It can be, but it's very curable with common antibiotics. Gonorrhea is an infection of a bacteria called Neisseria gonorrhea. This bacteria is spread by sexual intercourse as well as some other sexual acts. You can have gonorrhea infections of the uh, urethra located in the penis, or you can have a gonorrhea infection in the vagina, and that's what these two pictures are shown here. With gonorrhea, scary enough, it can be asymptomatic, or it can lead to burning during urination, some white discharge, or it may have just very little signs at all. So it is possible that this can be spread sexually when there are no real physical observable clues that a gonorrhea infection has occurred. Our next sexually transmitted disease is chlamydia. Chlamydia is an infection of chlamydia trachomatis. This is one of the most common causes of non-gonococcal, which is non-gonorrhea-based urethritis or pelvic inflammatory disease. Very, very often chlamydia is going to be seen with no symptoms. When chlamydia does have symptoms, sometimes it is shown as a swelling of the lymph nodes in the groin area, which you can see here in this picture. Another sexually transmitted disease is syphilis. Syphilis is caused by an infection of the bacteria Trypanema pallidum. This is a spirochete 
that um, will typically first cause infection in these um, form of a canker sore. Now that canker sore is what we see shown here on the penis. It can also occur on the vagina and sometimes on the inner folds of the labia. So a little harder to see on females sometimes. During the friction of sex, these canker sores can rupture, releasing the spirochete, and then that can very commonly cause a pass back and forth. A scary thing about syphilis is that this infection can remain latent for years. So the canker sore can go away and you may think you have no longer have syphilis. But if the infection stays in the body, it can lead to a secondary infection of a rash, common on the hands, but also mouth, vagina, or anus. And then ultimately it can lead to a tertiary infection, which is a really nasty open sore wound that can rupture on any skin covered area of the body. Syphilis can lead to very nasty congenital infections um, in unborn children. So it's very commonly that women will be tested for syphilis while they're pregnant. The last bacterial infection is called a cancroid. Cancroid is an infection of the bacteria Haemophilus ducreae. These are going to be soft cankers. And you can see they're just very nasty looking infections on the genitalia that are spread by sexual intercourse while there is an open wound. Moving on, now let's look at some viral infections. The scariest thing about a viral infection is that viral infections are typically not curable. Although those bacterial infections I showed you may look pretty nasty, that antibiotics will typically get rid of those. With something like genital herpes, you will see outbreaks and then it will go back latent. So this is caused by the herpes simplex virus. And as you can see from the different pictures, it can cause just a wide assortment of really what look like just little bumps on the genitalia. And they can be a little bit more intense looking like we see in this picture here. Overall, it will cause a painful short-term infection, then the virus will lay latent in the body until you see another outbreak. Even worse is genital warts caused by the, an infection of the virus, human papillomavirus or HPV. HPV can cause warts um, on the anus and the vagina, or, or it can cause deeper infections in the cervix, cervix leading to cancer. There is now a human papillomavirus um, vaccine that is recommended for teenagers. So moving from viruses, let's talk about fungal infections of the reproductive system. And the most common is going to see an be an infection of the fungus Candida. Candida albicans is a normal microbiota normal microbe of the reproductive system that we see in an antagonistic relationship with bacteria. They kind of keep each other in check, but every now and then with something like antibiotic use, the antibiotics will kill the bacteria leading to an overgrowth of the fungus candida and we will see this yeast infection that is painful. And then the last infection to cover in this chapter is trichomonas. Trichomonas vaginalis is a protozoan that causes a sexually transmitted disease. Very often men can be asymptomatic or they may have itching, irritation, or discharge from the penis and burning during and after urination. With women, women are going to have the itching and burning, but also a very characteristic smelly vaginal discharge. Trichomonas is treatable by an anti-protozoan drug. 